It's rather right of to set it all in a ruined theatre. There's obviously been some... Something dreadful has happened, and it's a dreadful, ugly world where people get beaten. <coughs> Even the little boys get beaten. And when, it, when, when Beckett was... Um, if you know this story, but during the Second World War, although he was Irish, he was living in France, and he wrote this play first in French. This is a translation, his own translation. And during the war, he used to work for the resistance against the occupying forces of the Germans. And he would be sent on assignments, and one of his assignments was to go with a, somebody else in the underground movement, to go, and, go into a, the forest and wait in a hut. They were waiting for a message to come. He didn't know who he was going to come from, because it would be dangerous to know people's names. And uh, if the message didn't come, then they had to go back the next night, and the next night, until finally one day they were the right. So, I think that's where he got the idea for waiting for God. People say, is God oh God? No, he's not God. And of course, in French, when it was first done, Godo wouldn't mean God to, right. to the French, would it? French for God is Dieu, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and God is a relatively uh, well-known, ordinary name in, in France. In fact, there was a, there was a famous um, cyclist, the Tour de France, and people were wait, waiting for them all to come by, and they, uh, there were some reporters said, What's he waiting for? We're waiting for Godot! <laughs> <laughs> and then on the, the other night there was a man outside the theatre, young lad, he said, my name's Godot. <laughs> Him? That was his first name, Godot. So, uh, so Godot isn't God, I don't think. I think he's, what he says is a, a farmer. So, yeah. Does it? Come from word meaning boot. Does it? I didn't know that. I feel like we really thought that at some point. Ah, well, I don't know. That's interesting. I don't know. The word for boot is I'll stump on the pronunciation, but I think yeah. it's G-O-D-I-L-L-O-T. I think it's boot. Godio. Oh. I don't think that's... Ah, that's interesting. Well, here's another thing. That's a, that tree is a willow. I thought this up. And... The French for willow is soul, S-A-U-L-E, soul. So all through the play there's a soul on the stage. They don't have anywhere to sleep, they don't have any income, they're eating vegetables. And this farmer's got a nice hayloft and a job. And food on a farm is usually quite good. But what are they waiting for? I mean, I think the play has been so popular over the years because Beckett was the first person to realize that an awful lot of life is about waiting. You were probably all waiting to come tonight. <laughs> <laughs> probably in the odd moments in the last week when you've been thinking of <laughs> Christmas or birthday <laughs> or holiday or examinations waiting to go to college, waiting to meet the right person, my age waiting for death. <laughs> we're all waiting. What we're doing is we're just passing time, getting through. I think that's the I think that's what he's latched on to. I think that's what's original about it. And uh, God there is just a bit of hope. Something will make life a bit better. Well, it would be fair to say that I don't think Harold Pinter could have written <coughs> No Man's Land if Beckett hadn't written Waiting for Godot. I mean, an awful, that's why God is a good play to know about because subsequently all dramatists are rather stuck with the fact that this play exists and they've got to measure up to it, really. But no, the, the other is more of a... It's about old age, another play about old age, or one, one man's got dementia. 
memory loss, gets very confused. Um, but I, what I, you know, people will tell you that this play is an obscure play, that characters aren't real, existential is a word you've probably discussed, all this. And yet for us playing it, it's abs they're absolutely real people. You know? And the first thing that happens is that one camp, my old man comes out and they've got dreadful feet. Well, if you know any old people, they've all got bad feet. <laughs> <laughs> we can't remember what happened. Well, that's old people. You've probably got grandparents a bit like that, maybe. And then the other ones have got a problem peeing. Well, that's another problem that <laughs> old men get. This is all very, very real. It's to keep going off to have a pee. <laughs> so when, when people say, oh, this isn't real life, yes, it is. It's absolutely real life. That's what life is all about. Can I pee? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a problem for you yet, I hope. But, you know, it will come. And, um, and the memory loss and everything else. And so... I think it's all absolutely rooted in that reality of getting through the day and watching out for the people. <laughs> I, I don't follow any one method. I try and work out with the director and the other actors what the play requires, what approach the play requires, rather than having a, coming to an approach, bringing an approach to the play. Um, but uh, I've never studied... Uh, the theory of acting, and, and every book I read about acting, I agree with. <laughs> I think they're all saying the same thing, really. Often by people who are not very good actors themselves. <laughs> so you're probably asking the wrong people, a person. Uh, I don't really know how I do it. But I take the character into myself, yes. And of course, he has to use what I've got available. I'm stuck with being the height I am. I try and make myself look smaller in this. <laughs> I'm stuck with the voice I've got. I can play around with that, but basically, you know. Yes, it's going to be my experiences and, and my body that's the instrument that the other character uses. That the character uses. And I suppose you know when it's working well, you stop talking about him and say I in rehearsal. Yeah. Um. So you're talking about this theme of um, this play being very based in real experiences. Um, and I was curious what your interpretation of um, how the characters of Lucky and Pozo, um, which they come on and produce a very s surreal experience almost, especially with Lucky's speech, um, how they fit into this uh, theme that you've talked about. I think they're another double act. Do you know what a double act is? Um, two, two comics who work together, mm -hmm. Laurel and Hardy. Uh, in the middle of the second act, Beckett suddenly puts an, an asterisk, you'll have noticed it. All the actors wear bowler hats. <laughs> Remember that? He suddenly remembers, ooh, I must tell the actors that. Like Laurel and Hardy, always bowler hats. It's a sign of being a comic, down and up. Pots are unlucky. I think they're another double act, and they do this trick with the rope, and they do this trick with the speech, speaking, and they come in and they take over our space, and Dee Dee can't stand it. And Gogo thinks, oh, I'd rather like to join this act, it looks quite fun. <laughs> they have chicken, <laughs> there's a bottle of wine there. I think they live up in the attic in this theatre. And after the intermission, they come on and do their another act. Uh, Pots are blind, lucky dumb. And tomorrow night they will be doing, well, tomorrow afternoon actually, they'll be doing the rope trick again. Um, that's the way I, I think of it. Uh, I mean, where have they come from? Well, there are other survivors. They are like Gogo and Dede, they're survivors. Who's in charge of who? Who's on the end of whose rope? I think that's worth thinking about. And that changes that dynamic. No, they haven't dropped from heaven. <laughs> They're into food. Bones. <laughs> it's a dreadful world they're all living in. And we, we all have to, as actors, think of that. That that's the landscape. Beyond, outside this stage, 
It's skeletons. We talk about them at length. They rustle like leaves. Don't look at them. I can't help looking. It's like being in northern France after the First World War when there's nothing but dead bodies. Or, or, or in this country after the Civil War. Gettysburg. The whole play is taking place in a, in a, in a, a graveyard. These are the poor guys who survived. Probably muddied all the waters, but uh, <laughs> you, can, you can unstir it in the opposite direction. Quick question: Do you like Gogo? You what? Do you like your, Do you like Gogo? Or I you like all the of characters I play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a sort of starting point. Even if it's Richard the Third or Iago, Macbeth, you have to believe them, that they're inside yourself. Unless, of course, the character hates himself on the whole. The worse the characters are, the more they seem to like themselves. <laughs> go, go, oh yes. I'm a pain in the neck. <laughs> of course, but then we all are. <laughs> all right, well, a safe journey home.